Emily, uh, Justin here from Aftershoot. We have a really cool live today. I'm so excited to be hanging out with two amazing people. I'm gonna give you guys. I'm gonna give you guys like a minute to join in, um, and I'm gonna also check on my phone and make sure that I can see what's happening here. Um, but we have an amazing live today. It's gonna be a lot of really cool information um, that I think you're gonna find valuable, right? I mean, just as a as a photographer, these two people inspire me. I love seeing their work. Um, they're not only great human beings, but they're really, really talented. Um, so having people who can actually teach you stuff that you're like, hey, that's my friend, uh, but also having people who really know what they're doing and then say, that's my friend is a really cool thing. Um, so I'm gonna just give me one more second. I wanna make sure we're live. Okay, so I see it. I'm gonna turn the volume down there and we'll actually get going. So uh, I see Michael Shane Miller says, love those humans. Uh, we have some amazing folks coming in. So without further ado, I want to introduce our grand, amazing human beings here. So we're going to introduce them. We have Amber and Sean from, oh my God, off camera flash. Welcome to this cute world. Yeah, it is so it's so great to be here, Justin. Uh, you thank you for the kind words. You're an awesome human being. I always enjoy spending time with you, uh, Amber. Eh, but you know, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got a little itch right there. I have a little. Huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> is that okay on Facebook Live? <laughs> We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out later. It's purely uh, no, be centered. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much for uh, for coming and, and hanging out and uh, and sharing some amazing stuff with us. Um, so first and foremost, let's talk a little bit about you guys individually. Um, so we'll start with Amber because you're in my top right here. So Amber, uh, tell us like who you are, where you're from, um, you know what what you're doing here. Uh, my name is Amber Henry of Amber Henry Photography. I live in the, that is my dog. <laughs> dog um, I wanted to say hi too. <laughs> that's Juniper. She is a two-year-old silver lab. Um, I live in the great state of Michigan. I am a wedding and portrait photographer. I realized yesterday, because yesterday was my birthday, and I realized that I have been a photographer almost half my life. Happy next birthday. year thank you <laughs> next year will be half my life my entire adult life i have been a photographer uh which is pretty extraordinary because who gets to do what they love and make a living out of it it's incredible Absolutely. it's incredible that's, so. that's amazing and really quick just because i i think it's such a cool thing but i wanted to just give a shout out to females who flash um so amber has a nice little facebook community um i somehow managed to be allowed in there um but it's you know, <laughs> flash and again you were it's recently weird. removed <laughs> okay i was recently removed but uh yeah so it, it is really, <laughs> yeah it's a really cool like you know safe space when i was there yeah uh, really cool <laughs> like, yeah, you know, um lots of lots of uh you know women interacting with each other encouraging each other uplifting teaching flash and that sort of stuff so it's a it's a really cool uh environment to to have uh and i, I will miss it um but yeah it's okay it was, i, I it understand <laughs> That's what I, I don't know like, how i got in but i got in went through and they were like why is this man in here and i'm like there are no men in here and they showed i was like okay but come on it's him so we had to boot you out but we love you love you um, but yeah, okay. females who flash is a group that I started on right now. We're on Facebook. We're going to get bigger. Um, cause we were just beginning, but it's, um, women only photographers where we encourage one another, no negativity, lots of CC, lots of posting. We try to do a theme every day, lots of encouragement in the education of flash because, um, you know, I don't want to generalize, but women tend to be scared of the technical stuff. And we want proficient women. We want women taking over the industry. Sorry, boys. We love you. But we want to, you know, educate and promote and encourage. And so if you are a woman and you love photography, even if you don't flash and you want or you just want to post some cute pictures, come join us. So love it. Yeah. That's amazing. And now we have Sean. From, we do. From Lara. Uh, it's not going to be as grand of an uh, introduction. <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit about you, Sean. What's up? 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, again, thanks so much for having me here, Justin and Amber. I uh, I don't have a Facebook group about flashing people, but uh, I do have a Facebook group uh, called the Portrait Photographer's Resource. It's open to anyone who loves taking portraits and pr pretty much any sort of photography. And uh, it's just a community to get people together, give business advice, posing advice, lighting advice, any everything like that. But a little bit of, about me specifically, I've been doing weddings full time for 14 years. I started when I was 20 years old before I could even legally drink. And uh, I have been uh, just loving every minute of it. I've, I've, I've probably captured around 600 weddings in my career. Uh, I do on about an average of 50 a year. So it's it's been it's been quite a ride. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with my work, I do a lot of environmental portraiture, meaning I love to essentially capture the connections between my couples and the environment is, is kind of a fancy way of, of, of describing what I do. And that's pretty much it. I just like taking photos and I have absolutely zero intentions of stopping. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, definitely where you're at. I mean, Colorado, I, every time you post something, I'm like, mm -hmm. wow, I am so sad that I don't live there. <laughs> it's like, Gorgeous. This is, yeah, your, your use of flash and everything. It's, it's perfect. Yeah. That's why I'm super excited to have you here to, to be chatting about all of this cool mm -hmm. stuff. I did want to give also your Facebook group a shout out. I know you kind of mentioned it, um, but one of the really cool things about Sean's Facebook group too is that there's a monthly um, image critique, right? So you can submit your images uh, and they'll go through and, and there's always a guest star, uh, someone really cool and awesome that will kind of just give you like a little feedback. And honestly, it's such a cool experience because it, for me as a photographer, I'm afraid to enter stuff in competitions. Uh, and so like I entered, a, I entered a couple of like, <laughs> Yeah. And, and you were like super nice, right? Like I didn't feel bad that my, my pictures weren't great. Um, but you guys gave me really valuable and useful feedback. So it was, it was stuff like that I could actually take and implement and, uh, and, you know, potentially, bring on to something else and, and do another award. So that is also another fantastic group. That one is open to everybody. Um, so go join that. What's it called again? It's called the Portrait Photographer's Resource. There you go. So we're going to get everybody all up in there, uh, getting some image critiques, because I think that's awesome too. Uh, yeah. And yeah, fantastic. So first things first, we're going to talk a little bit about Flash. Um, you guys apparently know how to use it. So that's, that's a really good start. A little bit. <laughs> um, your, work, your work is super incredible. I have some examples, so we'll show a little bit of that. Um, but you guys have a workshop coming up, right? And we wanted to kind of do this to introduce you guys to our audience, let them know, hey, if you're at WPPI, you have something coming up. So tell us a little bit about uh, what this workshop's all about. You want to jump in, Amber? Sure. <laughs> all right. So um, our workshop is going to be March 2nd. Uh, we're going to start at one o'clock and we do have one to five, but you know, photographers always say one more shot. So we'll see right now. <laughs> one to five. Um, it's, true. it's, uh, at the Mirage. We're going to start there. We're going to hopefully kind of, uh, you know, after a little bit of meander around and get some really gorgeous outdoor, the weather looks so beautiful. I'm so excited. I'm in Michigan. I cannot wait for the heat. Um, the class is called OMG OCF because we're going to, uh, base it around learning flash photography, implementing it. And we're going to start from the beginning and go all the way up. So if you are struggling and you're new, if you're brand new to it, you're going to find a lot of resources here. If you're not new to it, but you want to get a lot of creative information and tricks, you're going to find resources from this. So um, yeah, we're going to cover the whole gamut. Everything from uh, just using one light to using multiple lights to putting in gels. We're going to touch uh, a little bit on posing, um, environmental, because we're going to go outside. We're going to do some studio work. It's going to be so much. It's going to be so much. It's going to be so much fun also. I know. I saw some of the pictures you guys sent to me, and I'm just like, wow. Actually, can I show some of them? Like, Can we, can we talk yeah. a little bit about technique and stuff as we uh, – I, I, Sean, you can talk. <laughs> yeah, I see. You're, you're, you're. <laughs> no, yeah, please, please do it. And and I specifically only submitted uh, photos that were shot with natural light only. So, uh, no, <laughs> yes, uh, I actually, yeah, right. No, I actually, I submitted this photo because I feel like most people know me for this shot, and a lot of my followers have seen this photo before. But uh, I just wanted to bring it up for those again who are maybe not familiar with me. 
Love what it. do you want to know about it? What do you want to know about it? Yeah. So I think what would be cool is if we talk a little bit about like the, the process here, right? So you walk into this uh, beautiful cave system. Uh, what goes through your mind when you, when you're ready to like do a shot like this, are you immediately thinking, oh, I want to just showcase this as a silhouette. Are you like experimenting? How did you end up here? A little bit of all of the above, you know, this was, this was in Arizona, slot canyon, Arizona. And I wanted, you know, the, 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 just the dynamics of this canyon are so unique, so just incredibly beautiful on their own. And I wanted to try something a little bit different to show this space in a, a slightly different light, <laughs> pun intended, that you would normal than you know than what you would normally see with the naked eye. So I was playing around. I, I did start with a backlit image where I had the light pointed straight at them just to kind of give like a burst of light. And I didn't really quite like it. I wanted something a little bit more dramatic, a little bit more moody, so to speak. So I put a gel, a mag gel on the flash and then pointed it directly to the back of the wall. And one of the big com comments I get on this photo is, oh, look at the heart uh, that the flash or the light made. And that was completely unintentional. I did not see that heart until I looked at the back of my camera, like, oh, well, that's kind of cool that I had that effect. So there was some intention here, yes, but there was also a happy accident that happened as well. And uh, just, yeah, underexposed the ambient light a little bit to get that silhouette on the couple. And this is the result that you see. Cool. So this, this is probably like, uh, and you know, not, this is probably one of the more simpler techniques that you could walk into, right? Like your first time, let's, let's go from a beginner's perspective, right? You have something cool, some texture or whatever it may be that you want to showcase with a silhouette. This is probably the simplest way to kind of dip your toes into off camera flash, correct? Absolutely. And you know, one big part during the, our workshop that I'm going to be talking about is getting creative with just one flash. And, uh, I, I would say, honestly, about 80% of the photos I take are just with one flash. And I know, and, th and that's why we kind of wanted to break it up between me teaching one flash and Amber teaching multiple flashes, because I feel like Amber, on the other hand, she really likes to get creative using multiple flashes where I, mm -hmm. I like to keep things as simple as possible. I, a lot of times I just use one. So it's going to be a really fun and interesting perspective to get uh, both of our, you know, unique takes on how we would light a situation. And then once you as a student are taking the class, you can figure out, okay, well, maybe I like, I prefer Amber's way. Uh, I like the flexibility of having multiple flashes or, oh no, I actually kind of prefer Sean's way or, Hey, maybe I like both and I can find out a way to use both in different situations. Yeah, that's really cool. I mean, that's that's me. I'm actually the the mix of the two, right? So yeah, if I can do it with one flash and make something cool, I'm all about it. But a lot of times I'm like, what if I did four flashes, right? Like, what if I just made this <laughs> something totally irrelevant? Uh, and it's funny because I actually, I, I bring this case up a lot. I have one venue that I shoot at quite a bit. Um, and there's one photo there. It's booked me about 40 weddings at this one venue. And oh, it's wow. because I use six flashes. All right, I, I have a key light on them. I have a backlight, and then I uplight the arches on this building. Oh, right? okay. And people try it, and they can't do it. It's totally dark back there, right? So people like mm -hmm. they backlight, they front light, they can't really figure it out. And everyone sees mine, and like the venue puts it on the book, front cover every time, right? It's like the feature of the venue. These arches. So I gotta see this photo. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll, I'll share it with you guys. But yeah, <laughs> perfect. It's, it's just one of those things. Sometimes you need a lot more to make something unique, and then other times you can do something. This is such a unique and beautiful photo, but like, it's one flash. Like it, that's incredible. Right. It's yes. such a power shot. I love it. I love the pose too. The the hand, little hand dips. Oh, I love the hand dips. Yeah, yeah. sorry, I I, I pulled away. Right I forgive you. Yeah, uh, the hand oh, dips, the 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 bending of it. Um beautiful because you could take a shot like that and if you didn't if the couple were just static you know if he hadn't posed them and they were just it would have not it wouldn't have that that oomph that you know romantic uh atmosphere that he captured so beautiful absolutely all right so i actually these are not in no particular order but i think sean's okay. end up coming first um so I, it's just how they opened up in in previous sure, um, so yeah, no, uh, listen, actually, Amber, I, the photos you did, I have a lot of questions about, so. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I just submitted studio work. So yeah, I you know, love it. Uh, in Colorado. <laughs> 
So, well, th well, this photo could be taken anywhere, honestly, uh, so not just specific to Colorado. But, you know, this is an example of a photo where I did use multiple flashes. In fact, I did use three lights here. Uh, this I, I actually for this photo, I drew a lot of inspiration from Amber's style because Amber is very big on gel use and multiple flashes. So there is definitely a lot of Amber inspiration here. And. I, I don't use gels very often. I don't use color. And the reason being is for the most part, I'm doing weddings and it's such a fast paced environment. But for this particular photo, uh, this was a senior session and this client absolutely loves Japanese sports cars. She wanted to incorporate one into her senior session. So I'm like, you know what, Let, let's kind of, let's have some fun with this. So basically we're looking at three lights. As I mentioned, one light uh, with a Gikoto softbox is my key light to basically at i want to say like uh 10 and 2 modified with gels and then we used a little bit of atmosphere aerosol to uh get that smoke in the background and that's essentially it that's exactly what uh we came up with and here was the result yeah it's gorgeous I love this. this is love such a, this is such a cool photo is that your car by the way it is my car yes yeah, exactly um actually <laughs> I, I love your car sorry i knew I, you didn't say it and i was like i have to say it uh, <laughs> they have to know how cool that is um actually luke has a, a really good question in the comments um so luke wants to know uh what are you guys using for the flashes is it a godox 8200 or 400 or is it a speed light so like let's take this image for example you said you have the the geek mod softbox on the right hand side of frame what's in that softbox yeah absolutely so uh i can't speak for amber but i do know we both use geek Kodo flashes exclusively uh i think because amber's shooting in the studio a lot she's using a lot more of the the bigger models like the 400 and stuff uh, i don't know I'll, I'll let her comment on that but personally i use the 200s all the time because they're so portable and they're so easy to transport and they're so easy to use and they're they're very reasonably powerful uh they are very similar to the godox flashes for those of you who are not familiar with Geekoto, but uh, I just prefer Geekoto for a wide variety of reasons, which I won't necessarily dive into in this video. But yeah, three Geekoto GT200s. The uh, the I used the Geekoto 48 inch Octabox uh, with the GT200, and then the other two were modified with grids at, again at about 10 and 2. Awesome. Uh, don't worry, Amber, I'm going to ask you about your flashes soon. Um, <laughs> All right. I did want to ask another question about this photo before I sure. go on to the next one. When this scene, all right, so I walk into the scene. Is this at night? Yeah. Like, it's. I'm assuming it's dark because we can pull the taillights and, and whatnot. Um, how do you go about choosing, like, settings for this sort of a photo? Yeah, so this actually was captured um, around sunset. So it, there's still some ambient light outside, but... Uh, but what I did is I did underexpose the ambient light a little bit just because I only wanted the flash to cut or excuse me, I only wanted the exposure, the exposed image to come from my flashes essentially. So I am underexposing a little bit, which means I'm using a slightly higher flash power. I, I can't remember exactly what I'm, I was using, but uh, I probably had my my key light at around a half power because uh, again, you you are losing a little bit of light through the softbox, and there is some ambient light outside. And then I have my rim lights probably set around eighth power or quarter power. I, I don't really pay too much attention uh, after the fact as to what they are. I just you know do a couple test shots, make sure I get the light I want, and then just shoot from there. Cool. That's that's really good. Yeah, I, I have this theory that I can share with you guys at some point <laughs> about about yeah. how I use flash. Um, now this photo is so cool uh this yeah. is, obviously this is probably a much more complicated thing to get started with why would you no. set a couple on fire <laughs> <laughs> no actually very simple shot here uh honestly uh the the key to this is you're just using a very wide lens right to get that perspective i have the couple fairly close to the flash uh or excuse me to me to the fire and I have my camera probably about like a foot away from the flames. Uh, I think I'm shooting at about 16 to 18 millimeters here. Uh, two lights, one key light camera right to expose the couple, and then another directly behind them at a slightly lower flash power just to create a little bit of separation between them and the background. And uh, underexposing all ambient light really makes the fire pop. And that's pretty much it. That's awesome. Uh, this yeah. one is so cool. Do you know what modifier you had on it? 
Uh, yeah, I was using uh, so a ma a Magmon Magrid on the back for the backlight, just so the flash, excuse me, didn't doesn't go everywhere. Yep, you can see a little bit there the rem light on her hair, and then I think for the key light, I used a Magrid and a uh, Mag Sphere. And I see that someone was asking what f stop I used on this. I want to say I shot this at about f eight. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I love the, I'm a big fan of, of the Nikon 14 to 24, right? So I'm always yep. mm -hmm. looking for these perspectives and whatnot. So when it comes to the fire, fire is relatively bright. Uh, when you walk into the scene, are you worried about like how you're exposing the fire first? Or are you more worried about like the light on the couple? How would you approach this? Yeah. So one thing, you know, uh, that we're going to jump into or talk about in our workshop and something I'll be touching on uh, basically is it's all about balancing exposures, right? So you want to expose for the brightest parts of your scene or the highlights in the scene. And in this case, uh, the brightest part of the scene is the fire. So basically you're going to take a base exposure without even adding flight or flashes, or, you know, even thinking about flash, you take an exposure, uh, look at your camera's light meter to expose for the fire. And then once you get that exposure set, then you add in flashes accordingly to balance those exposures. Awesome. That's cool. Uh, this is, I'm just going to say this workshop is going to be so valuable. <laughs> Whoever <laughs> I can't wait. Is available for this workshop. You're going to pick up so much good information. Oh my gosh. So just, much. Just, you, yeah. It's if you don't walk away, just being an awesome photographer, then I, I don't know what to help you with because <laughs> we're going to, we're going to rock it out so hard. Oh, I can't wait. And I mean, honestly, like, just the mission price alone, like just to hang out, me and Amber is going to be, it's just worth it. You know, that's absolutely true. I can hundred percent verify just hanging out with you guys is, is worth the price. Um, cool. So this photo is absolutely epic. And when I think, of, when I think of you, I think of this stuff, right? I'm just these environmental shots, like yeah, your couple out there and just showing off all of the majestic beauty um so tell us about this i, I see something and i i don't know if this is flash or if that's natural oh no it's all flash uh, every single photo is gonna be uh you know with you know for the at least for this presentation it's all using flash right one light setup here uh basically what i same concept that i or the same approach that i did in the last image i'm, I'm exposing for the brightest parts of the scene in this case it's the the highlights and the clouds and then i'm adding in flash accordingly one thing i also did to this image is i modified it with a blue mag gel or i should say a ctb which stands for color temperature blue because i'm essentially doing a little bit of color shifting here essentially what's happening is i'm cranking up the white balance on my camera pretty high so everything in the scene is just super orange and you really make the natural colors in that sunset pop more but because the light uh on my couple is modified with the color temperature blue gel it makes it so the light that falls on them isn't overly orange or super warm so you have that nice balance in exposure or color temperature here making the environment look a little bit more orange making the light look on uh, the light that's falling on them a little bit more balanced this is one of my favorite tricks to implement. Uh, you know, when I on wedding days, you get like some texture in the sky, something cool, and like using just a different color gel on the flash can really just step up the overall image from being kind of meh to like, whoa. Uh, not that this image would be meh before, but I can only imagine <laughs> you just escalated this from like a from a seven to a 10 by adding that gel in. So uh, that's yeah, it definitely helps for sure. And now there's a couple ways to do that, right? There's there, there you have your color temperature blue, right? Mm -hmm. So you can, when you put that blue gel on, you can make it orange and then you have your fluorescent, mm -hmm. right? So you could do purple. Yeah, yeah, I don't personally uh, mess with, with the, those colors, you know, the purple and the fluorescent and all that, but I know some photographers who do. My big thing is I try to keep uh, my photos look as natural as I can. So, uh, you know, in my opinion, you don't really see a lot of those purples generally in nature. Sometimes you do, but it's not very common. So that's why I personally never do that. But I can I can see why a lot of photographers do because it is a really cool effect. Yeah, no, that's awesome. This is this is a, definitely a, a really good use case of it, just making that extra cool sky pop. Yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah. Uh, another similar situation here, you know, basically I'm exposing for the brightest parts of the scene. In this case, they are the uh, lights coming from the windows in the venue in the background. Really, really simple technique here. All I did here was I put a flash. Essentially, if you're looking right here at the couple, the flash is directly camera left. Actually, it's right in front of the hood at about nine o'clock. And uh, I'm modifying it with two grids because I really don't want, I want as little of that light to spill uh, on the hood of the car or anywhere other than on the faces of the couple. So I just did that. That's all I did. That's right. really cool. So this is a great, great, great example of single light. Right. And just yeah. real quick note, during Please. our class, we are going to touch on modifiers. Yes. and how to choose which ones to use in what scenario. And so that's a perfect example. If he had used a softbox or anything else, it would have it would have been too much. It wouldn't have looked realistic. So the double gridding, um, perfect, perfect choice. Yeah, absolutely. And that's honestly, that's it. Uh, one, one particular thing though I am kind of proud of with this shot is this whole set, I got some amazing photos from. And I only had about five minutes because we were running behind. And I literally had the DJ right here and the wedding coordinator right here being like, <laughs> all right, like, let's go. We got, we got we're running behind. I'm like, they're hey, always, I haven't done any they're always right there. <laughs> I know. I haven't, I haven't done any creative photos of this couple yet today. Like, I just need five minutes. They brought this car in just for these photos. Like, we got to do this. Um, no, so. is this one of your cars again, Sean? Do you just take the car? <laughs> <laughs> no, it is not. I, contrary to popular belief, I do mm -hmm. not have uh, a whole uh, showroom of cars. I, I do like my cars. I, I'm a very big car enthusiast, but no, this one is not mine. <laughs> so this is a this is a really uh, a really awesome and epic shot. Uh, Luke Thank you. Has, Luke has a question about this one. Though. Sure. Would you have used a snoot instead? Absolutely. You could definitely use a snoot. Um, and it, that's something you, you definitely could have used. You would probably just need to, you know, maybe back it off a little bit more because the, the light that comes from the snoot is very, very small and, and direct. really hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little harder actually, uh, with, with the grids, you have a little bit more flexibility and a little bit more room for error. Uh, the snoot in my opinion is, is generally better for like a studio situation where you have more time and more control over your light placement, but you absolutely could use a snoot. Yes. Cool. Yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna say the same thing. Like I can see where a snoot, I, I see where the idea of the snoot comes from, but I feel like, especially in in a in a pinch, the grid is a wider spread of light. So you definitely, you know, the grid is cool because it isolates it, but it is still the same size flash head. Whereas your snoot, you're looking at like, you know, usually the outlet is like a, the size of a quarter, right? Exactly. So that tiny yeah. little, little piece of light. So right, uh, especially if you're like he said, he was um, being pressured that. by everybody. Yeah, the snoot is beautiful, but you do need you need to be precise with a little bit more and more time to to set it up. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, yeah, another, uh, just, just a backlit shot. So remember how earlier the very first photo I was saying, you know, I tried a technique where I put a flash behind him and just pointed it at the couple. This is an example of just that. So I actually, in this, for this photo, I don't even know if I, I don't even remember if I used a modifier. I think I just put a plastic bag <laughs> over my flash <laughs> to keep it from getting wet. And, uh, or maybe I, I didn't even do that because, you know, this was such a fast paced shot, literally shooting in the middle of traffic. This was, uh, in Antigua, Guatemala, on their wedding day. And, uh, this was just, it, it kind of rained on and off all day. And I really wanted to highlight the rain, get that cool little pop of color from that umbrella. And then you have the yellow the, it's, I can't remember what it's called in Antigua, but this yellow, uh, building in the background is kind of a famous landmark. So I, I just, you shot fairly wide here, maybe at like 24 millimeters and one pop of flash directly behind the couple. And that was it. I love it. That's that's such a cool shot. I love love getting some of that rain and uh, snow and whatever conditions you got. Just mm -hmm. embracing it and and taking advantage of it's always cool. Absolutely. Now this um, one will make your jaw drop. Yeah. So this is actually <laughs> my most. It. This is actually it. my most awarded photo ever that I've ever taken. Um, every competition that I've submitted this to has won an award with. Uh, humble brag. Um, oh. and part of the reason is technically it's a very challenging shot to get. Um, and it's not perfect. I, 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 when I look at some of the, 
you know, the details up close, I can see a lot of imperfections. So it's, it's certainly not a perfect shot. However, it is a single exposure. A lot of times people ask me like, oh, like th this has to be a composite or you had to Photoshop that, that the Milky Way or the stars in. Nope. This is one single photo that I captured with using uh, a tr my camera on a tripod, an ultra wide lens. And I use two Gikoto flashes here, both modified with grids to prevent the light from going everywhere. And uh, that's essentially what you get. So you use one light for the key light and then one behind them to help separate them from the background. That's awesome. Just, so I'm obsessed with this image. Yeah, it's, this image is great. So we have, to, we have to go a little bit more in depth with this uh, sure. just because I think that everyone could find a little advantage from, from this because, I, I mean, it's hard to tell, but I'm guessing that you're probably doing like a, a, a bit of a higher ISO and a longer exposure. Like, do you know the settings for this or... I, I don't know them uh, exactly off the top of my head, but I have a general idea. Uh, so this was... Um, probably about a, I would say a 15, yeah, 15 second exposure, ISO 3200. I I know with this lens, I captured this with an F4, which was the widest aperture. And that's uh, a little bit more of the reason why I had to use the higher ISO and the longer exposure, because I'm having to compensate for that, that more narrow aperture with, you know, uh, other ways of exposing the image. Since I took this photo, I actually purchased a Sigma 14 millimeter 1.8 that I only use specifically for these type of shots. And, uh, but it's definitely possible with, you know, an F4 lens like this one. And it, the whole idea is, you know, you're, you're having the long exposure to capture the stars and then you use flash to help freeze the couple in, in place. So essentially everything is completely dark as your camera is on the tripod with the shutter open. And in the last second, we call it rear curtain, uh, rear, rear curtain flash or rear curtain sync. Mm -hmm. And uh, it fires the flash at the very end of the exposure, essentially freezing the couple in place. And this is the result. Did, That's when you showed this to your couple, did they just faint dead away? Because could you imagine having this photo as you yeah. in the photo? It's, it's insane. Yeah, I mean, I think they were pretty excited about the, about it for sure. This was a couple of years ago now, and they were kind of a more, uh, these guys were super nice, super friendly. They were a little bit more like kind of, what, what's the word I want to say? Not like super expressive people. They're just kind of more chill, more yeah. calm. And uh, so I think it was more like, a, oh, that's really cool. Kind of <laughs> kind of <laughs> got a reaction, you know? But, I would I would have been screaming, crying, falling on the ground. It's it's just to have that of you and your, you know, your partner forever, their kids yeah. are going to have this photo one day, their kids, kids. Yeah. That's, right. that's this is, this is the photo of, yeah, I, I understand why this wins sons of awards. Uh, I see Nid asked um, how many minutes you had this in long exposure. I know you'd kind of mentioned it was uh, it's like 15 seconds, right? And, and yeah, it's about 15 to 20 seconds. You can't do too much longer either. I mean, I know you had mentioned you were on 14 millimeters or, or whatnot, but one of the things that you also have to worry about um, is like the star trailing, right? So exactly. the, the tighter the lens, right? The more zoomed in you are on your lens, uh, the more likely you are to have that star trailing, uh, but exactly. also the longer the exposure, right? And I, I think if, I don't know if it's lens distortion or, or, uh, or what, but you can almost see it in the left-hand corner up at the top where the, le you're like right on the cusp of this starting to have those star trails, you know? Well, actually, yeah, you can a little bit. Uh, absolutely. And then that one star you see right there is actually the Andromeda galaxy from what I understand. So that's why you have that, uh, you, you know, that kind of effect where it looks like Saturn or something. Yeah, that's, that's a cool. galaxy right there. Yeah, it's amazing. But yeah, so that's when you do this type of shot, obviously the exposure, you have to kind of balance it. And like, I'm assuming you use a lot of flash. So you probably don't really ever go to ISO 3200. That's not like a um, thing for you. Yeah, not oh no, definitely not. Uh, but in certain situations like this, you, you almost have to. Yeah, but normally no. I, I try to stay below sixteen hundred. 
ISO. Exactly. And the other way to compensate it would be to be like a, a, a 30 second shutter. Right. So, so you're kind of, you can't, you, then you have the star trail. So you really, this was a, an extremely technical image, right? Finding the balance. It is. It's, it's very tough. Yeah. Cause then you also have to factor in ambient light, right. Or light pollution from nearby cities right. and all that. So uh, if there's a moon, right, the moon is going to affect your exposure as well. So there, these type of shots are very, very challenging and they're really hard to do on a wedding day. So there's not, very many opportunities where i do get to do photos like this but when i do you know it's it's always a lot of fun for how me um photos. how far away were you from a city or from any real light pollution for the so this was captured in rocky mountain national park so there there's not a ton of light pollution nearby there is a little bit uh from estes park which is uh probably about uh, maybe 10 miles away. But the nice thing about, you know, Rocky Mountain and, Col and a lot of places in Colorado in general is, you know, you are in the mountains. So a lot of the mountains are blocking a lot of the light pollution that you might normally get. Right. If you were on a you know flatter ground or, you know, in, near, near bigger cities. Right. I think that's, that's very important for people <clears throat> who want to go out and shoot this to, to understand the light pollution is really going to go and play with you. Um, yeah. To, to work with that one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is another, this is actually probably, uh, I get questions on this probably more than any other photo I've ever taken. People always want to know, oh, how did you capture this? How did you capture this? Super simple. Two lights at about, uh, I want to say eight o'clock and four o'clock. They're just outside of the frame, so you can't really see them, but they're basically right there, uh, modified with grids. And the reason why I did that is because I wanted light to go on just the couple. And this is during their first kiss, so it was kind of it was one of those moments that I really timed it well. Captured this with a wider lens, exposed as as I mentioned in my other images, exposed for the brightest parts of the scene. In this case, it was the mountains in the background and then just filled in the flash accordingly. And this was the resulted image. I love this. This is such a, a nice balance. They stand out amongst the scene, which is really cool. But also you just, the more you look at it, the more you see all the incredible mountains and everything behind them. Yep. So it's a really good use case of flash. And, uh, and again, it looks natural, right? I mean, it looks like they're just kind of spotlighted. It doesn't look like... Uh, you know, I know a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to use flash because it's too bright or it, do it doesn't look realistic or whatever. But this it, this feels natural. It looks natural. Right. And that's where the grids really help, too, because they're not spilling on the people. So if you were an audience member, if you were a guest, it's not going to be you might see from the corner of your eye something, but it's not going to be distracting. Exactly. Not going to, exactly. And he's not popping, popping, popping. You know, he's choosing, uh, you know, the proper moments to expose it and so it's not going to be something that's going to take away from the moment but at the same time again if you were that couple and this was your venue and you chose this what an incredible image to have oh absolutely that's why you choose a venue like this right and, yeah. a, and a good photographer <laughs> <laughs> yeah. photographer, isn't that's that true. true all right okay so I'll, I'll talk about this photo now i love this shot that i Go captured How did you that? <laughs> yeah so you know i used my, i used a camera for this photo and flash <laughs> and that's what lens did you have on you know i i want to say i used a 50 here eyes all eyes <laughs> so, without further ado we have, we have uh some amazing work from amber so this is some of your studio stuff and i love this photo right i mean I love this it is too. like this is such a cool use of light and color um tell me about this so i um i'm teaching gels at wppi uh so i'm having a class that's strictly on gels but it is sold out. In fact, it was one of the only classes that sold out within like the first 24 hours or something. Woo. So since you can't get me at WPPI for that, that's why you have to come to my shots class. I'm also teaching it at Sync in Orlando, uh, like the week before um, WPPI. So it's all about gels in, in the classes. So I spent some time in the studio last week and I just took some shots for the classes to show what I'm going to be teaching people there. So this um, is my beautiful model, and this was with three lights, and I do, because I know it was asked earlier, so I also use the Geekodo GT200s, and I use them in my studio too. I have the bigger lights, but I love the 200s because I move, I move my lights around constantly. I'm always moving and fidgeting, and they're so light, and they're so little, and so powerful. So I, I have like six of them. <laughs> so... Um, 
these are just the GT200s and I have behind the scenes images, but if you want to see them, you have to come to the class because I'm going to show exactly where they were, how I set them up, um, you know, in relation to the model. And then I actually took with the way that they were set up for this image, I took, I don't know, 20 incredible images of her moving around and jumping and they all turned out the same. You have the beautiful rainbow shadows on her and on the wall um, because once you, once you know light, you can play, you can have time to play. So I had the, um, the red, the green and the blue gels on her. And when they meet in the middle, they make white light. So the okay. additional colors that you're seeing, so the teals and the yellows and the pinks, all of those are offshoots of the lights mixing together where you get the rainbow effect. And I purposely had her wear shiny clothing because I wanted to, you know, show the way that it would reflect off the body and off of, I mean, anything, oh, you can use anything. That's uh, so cool. Wait, you just, you just blew my mind for a second. <laughs> there isn't a key light. There's no key light. You're There's just, no key light. you're just straight up. Yeah. Got, just, this is three gels white. on a white vinyl backdrop. That's all this is. That and we're is. going to recreate this um, at our workshop. Awesome. I, Ooh, I can't wait to learn it too. I know. I always Except thought for that, Sean can't see. I'm going to send you outside. I don't want you to Aww. steal it. Yeah, I've seen <laughs> I've, I've seen you ha with these photos before, and I was always like, mm, "How do you get the key light to like not necessarily ruin all the color in the background?" But you just blew my mind. I yeah. never would have guessed that it's actually just three different gels. It's I wouldn't it's either. Color theory. It's color theory, which I have become like the last couple of years really obsessed with. Um, wow. I'm still, I'm not, per there are photographers who are absolute, there are some women in my females who flash group who would Wait, blow really? their mind because they're, shut up, Sean, because <laughs> they, <laughs> they're so naturally attuned. Their eyes are naturally attuned to color theory where they're creating these images that are perfectly, um, harmonized together and they don't even realize they're doing it yet because they just have the eye for it. Um, but it is something that you can learn. And I've been, I've been studying it for, for a while now. Uh, but yeah, it's just it's just color theory application with gels. That's that's so incredible. Yeah, uh, yeah. I can't wow. believe it. I'm still I'm still jaw dropped. I'm like, all right, now I got to go find all my gels and and play with this because that's that's really cool. So basically, yeah, anywhere that a shadow falls is are are these uh, not to give away all the things that you're going to teach about, but are these like yeah. three flashes put right next to each other or are they yeah. like spaced out or? Yes, the, this yeah. particular one they are, but you can move them around. I mean, right you know, that. you think of anything, think of like holding a flashlight in your hand, wherever you put it, you know, is where the shadow is going to fall. So it's the same idea. I wanted them all in the one oh. spot. So I put them in there, but you can move them up and down. You could put them across. It's just wherever the shadow is going to fall where you want it to fall. So yeah. this is the same same concept in my mind is blown that I really I thought this was a key light and it's three. No, lights. just three, three lights with gels. And so this one I purposely and normally I would have cropped it. I purposely left the bottom. If you look at the very bottom of the image, you can see where my vinyl is kind of rolled up and it, the shadows kind of go like that. It's, it's very bottom. And I didn't crop that out because I wanted to help explain that it's wherever the shadows fall. Yeah. So you don't have to have a, a necessarily a flat white backdrop. You could do other things, but if you have bumps and curves, the shadows are going to, you know, the, and the rainbows are going to, uh, to mimic it. That's really cool. So, so these are, again, it's just the, it's the three. And then I, I love, if you like, if you sit and actually look at this image and like, look at everywhere that there's intersecting, intersecting light. I mean, this is a purple shadow, but it turns red because yellow crosses it but it's green here yeah like it's 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 insane and it's a, and you can see one two three shadows it's only three shadows it's but only they three. Yeah. Rainbow. so i i even since i was a little girl i loved prisms you know you like you put them in the in the window so and and they they create the prisms and the the rainbows on the wall i actually <laughs> as an adult have them all over my house on the side of my house where the sun um comes in and then throughout the day as the sun moves throughout my house from my kitchen to my dining room to my living room to my bedroom the sun will move and i will get rainbows throughout my house the entire day oh, because cool. i'm obsessed with it so awesome. you're kind of creating your own prism is the you, best way to think about it you've literally just blown my mind this is not at all what i expected this to be like i said i, I really thought i was more curious yeah. how you were getting a key light on them without ruining this and now i'm just it's not even a key light 
That's... I'm gonna and I'm gonna show everybody how to do it and go. You know, I want go play like Justin. I love you. Take a photo. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm gonna. Go, I'm, gonna I'm gonna take this photo. This is definitely a magical unicorn. <laughs> so we're gonna 100 very unicorny. Yes, absolutely. I love it. Uh, <laughs> but also, that's not it. We're not just learning one technique. We're learning all about color. Yes. Yeah. I, I love color. Um, so this one here, she has a, I put the large uh, Gikoto softbox behind her. And I lit it with a flash because I just wanted some of that extra bounce behind her. And then I added, I want to say a teal and a magenta gel on the other side because I am playing with where the shadows are falling. So my teal gel is actually on first. It's the brightest one. And in the way that if you can see where the, the flash is hitting her, it's causing her other side of her face to be in shadow. And then I'm putting the other gel into the shadow and it's going to fill in only the shadow spots. So where her shadows fall from the main light is where her color of the gel is going to be on the other side. Mm, and, that, and we're going to break it down. I'm going to, and in my gel class, I'm going to break everything down. We're going to go step by step. We're going to start with one light and then do two and then do three. Um, and by the time you get to the third or fourth, we're just going to start playing. And I hope like all these little light bulbs are going to pop and people are really going to I see it work. I can say without a doubt, like you, and, uh, and I'll be honest, somebody's probably looking at this like, why is, why would you do this? But when you start sitting and understanding what's happening here, like you right. just, you just turn that light bulb on in my right. head about how <laughs> flash interacts. Right. And it's, and it's something that like using this color theory, you can create yes. scenes based on this color theory. It's not that it has to be on the subject, but this is a perfect no. example. I can see exactly how this works and where it intersects. And now I'm like, oh wait, that's that's green and that's blue, right? And they combine and you get purple. Right. And I think if you if you know lighting and you know color theory, again, you can just you can create so much. Like the the world is open to you. You can go to any situation and make anything, but you have to understand it first. Why is this happening? And then how do I get it to you know, how do I know how to use it so that when I'm with a client or a wedding or somewhere else, you know, I know what I'm doing. I can go do it quickly and efficiently, you know, while my client and then keep moving on. So exactly. my goal whenever I'm teaching in my classes is to. One of my things <laughs> that I don't love is classes that take a beautiful model and put her out somewhere and then everybody's just popping off pictures. I just, you're not learning anything. It's not conducive to you going home and being alone and being able to recreate. So my goal for my students is to go home and do it themselves without me standing there without any walkthrough and knowing how to do it again and again and again and again and being able to have a portfolio that's beautiful um, and true when a client calls you for a piece of work, you can recreate it comfortably um, and, and have the confidence to do that. Absolutely. That's awesome. No, I, I think that's a, a great thing. When when looking for educators, you have to be very particular. Uh, and that's why I wanted to make sure I got you guys in while the class was still open, because at U2, yeah. I know people walk out of every uh, class with you guys and have nothing but amazing things to say. And they're able to take what you both teach and really implement it and utilize it. So uh, that's why it was important to me. You guys had said, hey, we're doing this thing. And I was like, I need you here <laughs> so that I can tell people to go because it really is. You guys, uh, you're not sending people off with model images that no. they can say, hey, I took this. You're sending them home with actual things that they can say, hey, I can do this with a model right anywhere. You can take this photo right. in your own studio if you want, or you can go take this wedding photo I mean, you won't get the Rocky Mountains behind you, but yeah. I can go do what what Sean's doing from his teachings. I can go do that at my mountain in Connecticut. That's like six hundred feet tall, right? Like I can, do, <laughs> I can yeah. do those things uh, just by leaving the class. So, so definitely we want really proficient. Cool. We want proficient yeah. right. photographers in the world, in our industry. And I have such a heart for this. It's so hard to to distinguish yourself from people who own cameras, and we all know what I'm talking about. And the way you're going to do that is is understanding light, understanding posing, and being able to recreate it again and again and again and again. And that's how you're going to succeed. That's how you're going to be successful. That's how you're going to have longevity in this field. Oh, absolutely. That's awesome. All right. So you have to tell me about this one because this is like. This is freaking sweet. This Didn't is. So <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so my, now my model is a redhead, but of course not this redhead. Cause she, you saw her in the other pictures, but, um, and a lot of people are scared to put red with redheads. Whereas like, why not? Why not do it? So this is a three light setup, which I, I, I use three lights a lot. I it's, it's my wheelhouse. I love three lights. It's my little triangle of, of happiness. <laughs> so I have a light just behind her, um, behind her shoulder where the hair is blowing on the left hand side of the image um, to create kind of a backlight. It's up just a little bit. And I want to say that I use a, um, a rogue umbrella for this one. So I had an, uh, an open umbrella for that one. Um, so just behind her and I, I feathered it so that the light was going to hit the top of her head and her hair, but also kind of the backdrop. So I'm just using a standard flat gray backdrop then back there behind her it's just a like a, a standard gray nothing nothing special the gray is really really good for for the gels though so that's behind her and then i have another one just off her other shoulder back there same with an umbrella um hitting her shoulder and then rim lighting that side of her hair and then the main light on her and i want to say and i'm trying to remember i should probably look back through my behind the scenes photos really quick i want to say that i also had a softbox as my main on her face for that one i'm gonna i have behind the scenes that i'm going to share in my class but i want to pull it up so i can be um well anyway so the main light on her is not gelled the other two the other two are yeah so i have a very i have a very small soft box on her in the mm -hmm. front and that of course is not gelled it's just her main light the and then i did spray the atmosphere behind her so that's where you get that beautiful uh, soft, okay. soft haze yeah, yeah. And, you know, like Sean did before with the rain, anything that reflects and comes between the gel and your client is going to absorb that light and put it back out. So that's why fog is incredible because fog is going to dissipate and it's going to, that's where you get that softness from. When I took it without the spray, you could just see the backdrop and you could see the light was here and light here. But that beautiful softness comes from the spray spreading, spreading the gels around the picture. And where the reds and the reds kind of intersected in those shadows, I got those beautiful purples. And then when I went into Photoshop, I pulled the purples up. I still might go back and play with these images um, in Capture One and do some more, some more color editing. But I love the purples in here because that purple and red combo is just so beautiful. That's awesome. Yeah. This color theory stuff is like 10 out of 10, must okay. learn. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean... Between the two of you, there is so much value and so much that people are going to pick up from this. So this is, uh, seriously, this is the place you have to be. I did see, Sean, you posted it down in there. Um, so there, there is a link uh, available. Um, so we want to make sure that we we get, uh, get you guys signed up for this. So it is March 2nd. March 2nd from 1 to 5 p.m. in Las Vegas at the Mirage. Uh, mm -hmm. We are going to be closing the uh, the registration here pretty soon just because we do want everyone to have, you know, the opportunity to learn and not feel overwhelmed with a bunch of photographers. So we are right. capping it. Uh, so we, ha we don't have a date yet on exactly when we are going to close it, but it is going to be probably in the next uh, week or yeah. so uh, just because we don't want like – you know, a lot, a lot of last minute registrations two days before the event and just to be, you know, just to have to like change our location or something. So we do want to have a, uh, we do want to be as prepared as possible. So if you are interested, please sign up ASAP. And it, the best part is the price, honestly. And Amber, yeah. I'll let you talk about that. You can. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so Sean and I, when we, when we got together and started talking about doing this, one of the things that we both agreed on is we don't want it to be crazy. We want to be able to go around and do some hands-on help with every student. And when you get too many people in the class, it, you know, we've all participated in those um, those workshops where it was just every man for himself and it was not. So we don't want that. We want proficient photographers. So, um, so yeah, so I also forgot your question, Sean. So ask me that. <laughs> uh, uh, no, uh, why don't you tell them the price, the investment, how much oh, it costs? The, price, the freaking price is $1.99, <laughs> which is the lowest that him and I have ever, ever, ever By far. For. Um, and we went Excellent. again, we went back and forth on this. We're like, oh, I got it so low. Um, but also, and it's so much for so low, but also like, we really, we want to meet everybody. We want to have fun. Um, we want to get you started in the field. And then we're hoping that you'll come back and learn again. You know, we have also, we have the most incredible sponsors, 
holy crap, if you come, your price is going to be returned to you like tenfold with the amount of swag that our wonderful aftershoot, um, Geek Odo, uh, Pro Prints, God, who else do we have? Uh, so many people are giving us stuff to give away. Yeah. It is crazy. Everybody that we approached was like, yes, 100%. What can I send you? Um, <laughs> I mean, it, it's a testament to you guys. I, I mean, really, it's it's you two are so talented. And like every time you guys post something, it's it's really like, you know, Amber, your work, your your color stuff is so cool. Like I've seen your senior photos and things like if you guys don't you guys just have to go, right? I mean, it's just, it's such a no brainer. Sean, your stuff is incredible. I mean, I, I watch you when you do your editing lives and all sorts of stuff. And it, and it's so yeah, much fun you. to like, just see. Um, and that's why I actually pulled up this question from Lexi. Uh, do you commonly Photoshop out your tripod or flash or is it positioned out of frame? Uh, and Sean, I've watched you do this. You taught me something because you do it a little oh. bit. Yeah, I used to Photoshop my light stands out until I saw what you did. Well, that's what, what I do. do. I Photoshop them out. What do you do? Oh, you. So, uh, so what well, I. Well, it depends. It's situational. Yeah, it's situational. But what I, I saw Sean doing a lot is depending on the position of his light stand, he'd actually go in, and I didn't know I could do this. But if you draw with the masking tool, right in in Lightroom, yeah. you can actually just create the shape of the flash stand and yeah. remove it. I used to go. I didn't know I could draw it. I used to click the circles over and over, and then oh, okay. and I saw you just going zoop encircling it and then cloning it and i was like zoops a lot i'm i'm really dumb <laughs> aren't i right like so i actually learned that from you and it's changed my life so oh uh, wow that's, great to hear. that's awesome i'm glad Perfect i could change photographers life. we love them <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah no i mean it, exactly it's all about making our life you know easier and more efficient and you know that's one just to give you guys a quick plug that's something i've really been enjoying about after shoot recently is you know your new ai uh, ai editing uh mm -hmm. you know i'll run a batch through all my wedding photos and it, it does cut down on my editing time as well. I, I do try to get them as perfect off the camera as I can, but Aftershoot really has helped me in that regard just to, to, to lessen the workload a little bit and make sure that I have more time to drive my cars, go out <laughs> on dates that never work out, uh, play, play World of Warcraft, you know, whatever it is. That's cool. That's so, that's so awesome. Uh, so uh, Larry's in here. He <laughs> said, you probably said this. Oh, what, what, what power <laughs> are your flashes? Um, so uh, I think you guys had mentioned it. Uh, I believe that um, oh. our, the man himself was watching at one point. Uh, I don't know if he's still Haram. doing it. Yeah. Uh, but Haram is, uh, is hanging out <laughs> with the comments, I think. Um, but you guys are mainly using the GT200s. Yeah. Which is a 200 watt second flash um, by Geek Odo. I'm a huge fan of this. So if you're watching and you're like, hey, I need new flashes or I'm interested in getting into flashes, uh, this is, uh, you know, I try not to stand by, by any company and like actually this beautiful light on me, this is their, their, the Geek Auto mm -hmm. light bar thingy. And then like, I'm going to just pivot. Don't judge me. Um, over here is judging, the, the, the 2000 uh, watt or the 200 watt seconds continuous light there. And I have their softbox here lighting me. So uh, they make really high quality products at a really affordable price. Uh, I break everything here. I'm going to tell you that. He's like, <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. he's like, yeah, no, but I haven't been able to break anything of his, which is really cool. So uh, <laughs> durability wise, um, they're they're really durable and high quality products. Mm -hmm. so and they're I lightweight just, and yeah. they're cost effective. It's ridiculous. Like I know I'm going to age myself here, but when I did started weddings, like you didn't have portable strobes that weren't connected to a power bank Same. and you had to take it out. If you wanted to overpower the sun, it was, it was like an ordeal. It was <laughs> not fun. Um, yeah. So just the, the um, uh, spoiledness <laughs> that photographers have now at having the power of like the sun in there. Yeah, in your hand. I know. Um, so I actually, I also use the, the Geek Auto GT 400, um, right. because I, I have their, their, their soft boxes are literally the best soft boxes in the world. Um, like I, I'm just the, the geek mod soft boxes, they fold entirely flat. Yeah. Uh, 
they are they open up in seconds and this isn't like i don't get anything for saying this i just really believe that you guys should all own this uh but it like you insert your your thing in here so i use the 36 inch one but you insert your your bowens mount or your your speed light mount into this thing and then you just yep. put it down and then pop it open and then it's ready to go uh, i love these soft boxes they're easy to set up they're super fast uh, they're lightweight. They fold compact really easily. They're they're really um, they're the bee's knees, as the kids say. And there's when a I, new one coming out too. I know. I saw the new one. Uh, it's yeah, hush, 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 hush. Yeah. But it's secret. But yes, there's yeah. a new one coming out, and I'm very excited yeah. for that. So there's there's a lot of really you know again their their products are really awesome, and they and yeah. I just can't recommend them enough. So uh, when I when I travel too. Um, in my suitcases, the flat, laying them flat in the suitcases. Oh, it's such a game changer. Like I yeah, said, such a game changer. I've got back to back to back, um, you know, trips to Florida, trips to WPPI. Um, and I will just flatten those little babies, put them right in there. They're so lightweight. They're compact. Um, easy peasy. So I was, I was sharing my screen, so I didn't get to see a lot of these comments. So uh, Gabriel asked, how was that wedding picture lit? So I'm going to have you, if you can just comment like which one, if you go back in the video or something. Uh, and actually, if you guys are cool with it, maybe I'll just make a I'll comment on this video with those images. So if anyone has any questions about specific images, maybe they could just uh, ask there so we can we can get that done. There's a yeah, ton, absolutely. A ton of Amber is crazy talented. Uh, <laughs> Amber is the go. Uh, oh, love geez. your goal. Um, <laughs> Fatty asked, is it free or I have to book it? You do have to book this in advance. Okay. It is $199, but it is worth every penny. Uh, okay. like, I said, there, like you guys said, there's a ton of sponsors that have some really cool stuff. You're going to walk away with swag. You're going to walk away Good. with stuff. Well, yeah. uh, Larry said that he hates that feeling of leaving a conference and saying, I don't know how to do this. Uh, so again, you guys teaching so that they go home and know how to recreate what they did yes. is really awesome. Um, I believe this one, sorry, I'm kind of rushing through because we're a little bit over on time, but I want to make sure that we get you guys questions answered. Hey, Amber, how did you decide whether you used a white or gray background? So I'm guessing that is the, the last image we showed with the, where you said it was a gray background. Like okay. So it's, again, just think about color, white bounces and black absorbs, right? With anything, white bounces, black absorbs. So if you have a gray, then you have control you have more control over it. Um, whereas if you have white, you're going to get maybe too much light because you're going to have the white bouncing maybe on your client or thing. And if you have black, it's going to suck all that color up and you're not going to have it. So that's the easiest way, the fastest way to think about it. Because um, when I did the rainbow shot, that was on a white because I wanted all that color to show up. When I do uh, like my sports images, if you go on my website, you see my sports images and you'll see the gels behind them. I use black because I want the gels to pop out and only hit them and behind them is dark. But gray is a good neutral. So hopefully, hopefully it answers that. Cool. And then Gabriel came back. He said the wedding picture that had the bride and groom that was lit in the middle. So I'm guessing that is the star one potentially. Was it the star one or the ceremony but, one? Uh it could be one or the other, but let's, the let's other. go to the star one because I think that one is the most Yeah, confusing. I think that was, now that I'm remembering, I think he, that what might have been the one he was commenting on. Basically, uh, you know, to go back to that image, it's essentially uh, you have two flashes, right? You have one directly, one light directly behind them, which helps create that separation between them and the background, right? Because when you are shooting against a dark background, uh, mm -hmm. they can tend to get lost, especially when you're doing photos where, you know, they're so small in the frame. So you need some way to separate them. Yeah. Uh, so I have one flash there and then I have one camera right basically at nine o'clock. And uh, it's, I think for that photo, it was in the frame and I did remove it in post-production. Uh, to just so uh, obviously you don't see the the light in the final product. Uh, oh, and he's asking about the ceremony. Okay, so uh, the ceremony uh, I did I did describe how I, I lit that. Um, so you can always go back and watch that. Yeah. But yeah, they are basically just outside of the frame at about uh, at forty five degree angles, pointed straight at the couple. Awesome. Yeah, I love that. I was just uh, at, just talking about that. I have a nice little diagram that you know. Uh, again, if you're in Las Vegas. At WPPI, you should just take this class. It's such an insignificant investment for how much you're getting back and how much resources you're going to have. Uh, like at these two, 
they're open books. They're not gatekeepers or anything. So you'll walk out knowing exactly what they did and how they got there. So except for my hair care tips, I don't share that yeah. with anyone. He doesn't no. share his hair care tips with anyone. God damn it, Sean. I told you not to wear a hat today. So you could help. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Here, yeah. here you go. Here you go. He doesn't oh, share there it is. There it is. <laughs> uh, Mickey's asking what level of photographer would you recommend to take this? Oh yes. man, any, cause we're going to start from the beginning. Yep. You know, like Sean said with his one light, like he is going to kind of open the floor with doing one light. And once you master one light, adding them on is going to be so much easier. Um, but if you have your one light mastery and you want to know how and why and why to add on other lights and what, like we said, what modifiers to use and all those things. And that's what, the, yeah, that's what the class is for. It's going to be dope nasty, as the kids say. It's yeah. super dope nasty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if they have attended the class or, or mm -hmm. are going to attend the class, do they need to bring anything? Does that come when they sign mm -hmm. up? Like, do, should they have flashes already? If they need flashes, should they go um, to the Geek Odo website and, and use your discount codes and buy you flashes? Should, okay. You should go to the Geek Odo website. And use Henry 10 and don't use any other discount <laughs> coupons ever. ever. <laughs> Henry 10. Henry 10. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, bring along what you have. I would say bring along what you have, but we're going to have equipment there uh, to play with. A little bit. Camping. Yep, absolutely. But bring, yeah. yeah, bring what you're comfortable with too. Yeah. So you don't, you know, and whatever you can bring, bring it. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, yeah, we'll have this was absolutely amazing. Uh, we're going to see. So you're on the second. So unfortunately, she can't make it um, to your. I think that, that she right. might have it. Yeah. So you can't make it. But I am early. You'll you'll find right. us all there. Right? right. And we the reason we did it early is because we wanted to not take away from your education at WPPI because WPPI already right. has so many wonderful, incredible classes. We didn't want someone to miss out because they already like, you know, we're not trying to steal the thunder from WPPI because we love it. And we're both teaching there. Um, but yeah, I mean, a day early in Vegas, there are things worse that could happen. Yeah. <laughs> to your we, 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 we have fun. We have it's fun before so the PPI starts. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. And, and then if you see Sean uh, at the bar, buy him a little shot and you'll see a lot of fun. There's yeah. Of oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, happen. yeah. I, I'm sure they're, the picture of me and Sean is going to float around. That. Oh, yes. Oh, photo. the I'm one where you guys are like looking down together. together. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so uh that's amazing thank you guys so much for taking the time to jump on and, and hang out with us um again it's uh seanlara.com backslash wppi if you guys want to sign up and, and check it out um and then yeah if you're at wppi come visit the after shoot booth come visit these two awesome human beings uh check them out do either of you have any space left in any of your wppi classes um so i I'm not sure about my photo walk, but I am teaching a seminar as well that yes. anyone can come to, anyone can walk into. It's in a, it's in a big uh, conference hall. So that one, unfortunately, is at 8 a.m. on Thursday. So try not to drink too much the night before. <laughs> Get out of bed. Come check it out. But that one is going to basically be a one and a half hour presentation on essentially what we just did, environmental portraits. And I'm really going to break down a lot of images and give you guys a lot of inspiration on how to incorporate some of those in your portfolio. Uh, so that one, yes, anyone can come to. Awesome. My um, my class was sold out. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. for the second year, <laughs> but I will be at the after shoot booth. Yes. Um, I was just talking. So Wednesday, awesome. I think I think Wednesday at two. The yeah, fifth. I'll check the social media. We'll post yes. it. We'll we'll let Come you guys know when everyone's gonna hang out at the booth. Um, yeah. and and we'll yeah, well you guys can ask questions and you you know we usually have some stuff there if you want to show off some things too, if you want to take some pictures of models and fun stuff. So come visit yeah. us at WPPI. Uh, yeah. But seriously, thank you guys for for giving us so much knowledge and taking the time to, to jump on with us. I really appreciate it. Uh, again, that's Amber, Henry. And if you're a female, you're going to Females Who Flash. Just Females Who Flash. Females yeah. Who Flash. You're going to no go- No Justin allowed. Uh, there yeah, you. no Justin's allowed. You're going to go learn from there. Um, and then everybody else, uh, you head over to um, the photographer's resource right i said that right portrait, yeah. portrait photographer's resource portrait photographer's yeah. resource uh with yeah. sean lara 
Uh, and you're going to enter your images because they're going to get critiqued and you're going to improve on your images too. Uh, and we've so. had some great educators this last, last a couple of weeks ago, we had Scott Robert Lim uh, jump yeah. on and it was, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, it's a blast. I love watching them. I learned so much. I love submitting to them. I learned so much. Um, so really thank you guys so much for the time uh, and I can't wait to, uh, to see you guys yes. all soon. Yes. Thank all you right. so much. See you